Hello, it is week 12 of Trivia Tuesday, and it's the last week of distance learning, so it will also be our last week of Trivia Tuesday. Um, so I decided I'd come here in my classroom and try and recreate our normal situation as much as possible. Um, but if this being our last Trivia Tuesday makes you sad, um, I just want to remind you that I do run the Trivia Club. I'm the Trivia Club Advisor, uh, Brain Bowl. Uh, so if you want to come join with me next year, uh, we'll be meeting Fridays after school and you should come because we ask each other trivia questions, we travel to other schools and compete sometimes, um, and it's just a lot of fun. So you should come join me for Trivia Tuesday on Fridays after school next year. Uh, now that the commercial plug is over, let's just go ahead and get started with Trivia Tuesday. And this question, our very first question, is for my for my nephew Craig. He is uh, six, I want to say, um, and this comes as his suggestion. There are these little worm-like creatures that live in the sea, and they're called zombie worms. And I want to know what they eat to stay alive. Now. I know I just called them zombie worms, but it's a little bit of a misnomer because they don't actually eat brains. I don't know why they're called zombie worms exactly, but they don't eat brains. So try again. They actually secrete an acid from their skin to dissolve this thing that they eat. It's kind of gross. Do you need a clue? Okay, so remember, because they live in the ocean, they're gonna eat something that lives and dies in the ocean. I'll give you a hint. They typically eat part of an animal, not all of it. And consider for a moment, what happens when sea animals die? Something has to help decompose those creatures and the zombie worm helps with that. Uh, you can pause if you wanna keep guessing, but I'll pose one brief question before I give you the answer. And I'll ask, why is it, do you think, that you so rarely find whale bones washed up on shore? Oh, that's right, because it's the zombie worm that oozes an acid to dissolve the bones so it can absorb the proteins and fat from the bones. Gross. Thanks for the question, Craig. Let's go with something a little simpler uh, for our second question, and it's related to Harry Potter. So hooray for all my Harry Potter friends out there. Um, here's my question. What non-human character attempts to prevent Harry Potter from returning to Hogwarts? Now, if you're anything like me or my sister, you automatically know what I'm talking about. If you're not like her, here are a couple of clues. This character makes his debut in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. This character is also initially associated with the Malfoy family. If you want to keep guessing, you can, but I'm going to tell you that this character, whom Hermione wants to liberate with her Society for the Protection of Elfish Welfare, is Dobby, the house elf. Did you get that one? I like that one. Do we want a really random question? Let's go really random. I want to know what Greek mathematician forbade his followers from eating beans. I know, that's random. And trust me, you've heard his name. It's not Euclid, even though he's considered the father of geometry and I said it was a mathematician, but it's not Euclid. It's, more, it's somebody whose name you've heard more commonly than Euclid. If you've ever taken algebra or geometry, I promise you know this guy's name. And no, it's not any of the Greek philosophers, Aristotle or Plato. They were more well known for um, their general philosophies, not their thinking and theorizing about mathematics. Uh, but I promise you that this guy that we are thinking of, you've heard of this guy's theory. You've even had to do the math around it, is my bet. Um, you want to know why he banned his followers from eating beans? Because he believed if you passed gas, you would lose your soul through the gas. That's kind of a weird idea for a smart guy uh, who developed, hint, a theory dealing with triangles. Did you guess it? 
the guy who was afraid to fart out his soul was Pythagoras, the developer of the Pythagorean theorem. The Greeks were really smart, but they had some weird ideas about stuff. All right, let's do another Greek-related question, and this is one you should definitely know the answer to. Um, but it does ask us to think all the way back to our unit on Greek mythology and the Odyssey. Um, so remember Odysseus? He goes to Troy to fight the Trojans because Paris kidnapped someone, which is how the whole Trojan War starts. So what I want to know is, whom did Paris kidnap? If you remember the origins, Paris was a prince, and he was asked to judge a beauty contest between three goddesses. And Aphrodite basically bribed him to declare her the winner. And she was like, if you say I'm the most beautiful, I will give you the most beautiful human woman. Um, and unfortunately, that woman was already married to King Menelaus. So when Paris declared Aphrodite the winner and he went to claim his prize, and he went back to Troy, it sparked the Trojan War because King Menelaus was like, you can't just steal people. What's wrong with you? Um, so whom did Paris kidnap? Are you ready for the answer? Did that help jog your memory of what we talked about? It was Helen of Troy. Remember, she was the one who was said to have launched a thousand ships because of her beauty. Um, moral of the story, if you don't want to start a war, probably don't kidnap someone. I guess that's the moral. All right, it is time for our final question, our very last question of the year. And it's definitely a phobia. We've kept the trend going all year long. Um, and so what I want to know is, what is phobophobia a fear of? Now, if you suffer from this fear, our Trivia Tuesdays might have been a problem for you all year long. Now, it's not a fear of trivia. It's definitely not a fear of Tuesdays. Another clue is that if you have this phobia, it may actually lead to this phobia actually happening. Like, having the phobia causes it to occur. It's almost like a self-fulfilling phobia. Also, having another phobia already can actually cause this phobia to manifest. Have you guessed it yet? Phobophobia is actually a fear of phobias. That's right. We have nothing to fear but fear itself, and that's our phobia, a fear of fears. Students, my dear friends, I'm so glad to have had you in class this year. I'm so glad to have had you along our Trivia Tuesday journey um, and along our distance learning journey. Thank you so much for being a part of my class and a part of my learning and the learning of the students around you. I had so many plans for us. I had so many things I wanted us to do and we just, we didn't get that chance. Um, so come visit me next year. Um, I want to see you. Um, I'll miss you. Have a great summer, and I can't wait to see you all again soon. Bye.